Sometimes you just got to ignore the naysayers. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Too many times I am online browsing in either a forum or maybe a subreddit or something along those lines, and someone will post an antenna question, and it usually revolves around they've got some sort of challenging or unique situation, and they're trying to figure out how to get an antenna up that will work for them. And too many times I see replies to the effect of, well, it just won't work. No other real context is given. No other information that might be helpful for them is posted. And I can see how this would be a real discouragement to new hams. And honestly, it just gets old. So as much as I would like for this to stop, it probably isn't going to. So what can we do? Well, we're just going to have to ignore the naysayers because seldom is there a perfect situation. You just got to take what you have in the environment that you're working with and set it up and put it on the air. Is it perfect? Probably not. Could we do X and make it better? Maybe. But the main point I want to drive home today is just get out there and try it. I don't care that it's not perfect. I don't care what the naysayers say. I want to take an antenna put it on the air, and see what happens. That's the way I've learned the little bit about antennas that I know. Everyone that's been around this channel for a while knows that I have a love for NFAD half waves. It's pretty much my go-to antenna. And I often get questions about what configuration do I run? Well, I always give the same response. It depends. It depends on a lot of factors, where I'm at, what's around me. My preferred method? Well, I prefer the inverted L configuration, where the feed point is at the bottom, the wire goes up a mass, roughly 32 feet, and then the rest of it goes out horizontal. Truth be told, though, that portion that goes out away from the mast at the top is seldom horizontal. More often than not, that is actually sloping back down to the ground, or maybe 6, 8, 10 feet off the ground, wherever I can get to tie up the far end of the antenna. But I never worry about that. In fact, when we're out in the RV, sometimes when we uh, roll into a state park and back into our camping spot, well, the trees won't even allow me to get the mast up to the full 32 feet. So what do I do in that case? Well, first, I don't give up. I just put the mast up as tall as I can, and I run with the rest of it. So if I can only get the mast up 15 or 20 feet, I'll put it up 15 or 20 feet. I'll run that wire up the mast as high as I have that mast erected, and then the rest of it goes out horizontal. If the situation won't allow for me to use that mast at all, well, I might have to run it as a sloper instead. I really don't care. I'm just going to get out there and put the antenna up the best way I can for whatever environment I have to work with. A couple of weeks back, one of our local club members uh, asked if someone could come over and help him get an antenna up and on the air. Well, I volunteered and went over to his house. Turns out he had a 6 through 80 meter in-fed half-wave antenna. After looking at his situation, we determined that probably the best way that we could put the antenna up, the most efficient way we could put it up in his particular situation, was a sloper. So we put the feed point at the eave of his house and ran the length of the wire sloping up to one of the big oak trees in his yard. After we got the antenna uh, put up, we went ahead and connected the coax and ran that back to the radio. I started spinning through the 20 meter dial after we had everything set up and heard several conversations going on. Now, I didn't want to break into one of those QSOs just to ask for a signal report, so I kept spinning the dial. Finally, I came across a guy calling CQ. 
I threw my call out and he responded to that very first call. I can't remember exactly, but I want to say he gave me a 5-5 or a 5-7 report. Uh, whatever it was, we had no problem communicating. So I told him, you know, we just put this antenna on the air and was just kind of giving it a test. Well, he was inquisitive and wanted to know what type of antenna we had put up. And I told him we had just put up the Infed half wave. His next question was, did you use a counterpoise for the Infed half wave? To which I replied, no. True story. His next statement was, that antenna won't work. Let that sink in for a second. I had literally been having a conversation with this gentleman for the last two or three minutes on an antenna that he's telling me won't work. And that's why I say sometimes you just got to ignore the naysayers. If I was a new ham and didn't know any better and had been talking to this guy before we put the antenna up, I might have been led to believe that I shouldn't even bother because the antenna wouldn't work. Here's another example for you. If I told you I was going to go out and connect a radio to a street sign and use that street sign as an antenna, would you believe that it would work? Probably not. But that's exactly what a friend of mine, Steve Goodgame, did two or three years ago. He took a G90, ran a jumper wire from the back of the radio to that street sign, tuned the street sign with the G90 radio, and then proceeded to activate a park. And the cool thing about that is he actually captured it on video. I'll leave a link to that video down in the description below so you can check it out and see that it actually is possible. Now to really drive home this point, I took my 705 into the backyard just the other day. I put the feed point of an infed half-wave antenna about 8 to 10 inches off the ground. The other end of the antenna I just had at about head height for me. And I'm not a very tall guy, so it's less than 6 feet off the ground. I went ahead and set up the Evolve laptop and attempted a Winlink connection. Lo and behold, the first time I tried it, that connection went through. Now, the gateway that I was making a connection to was only one state over, but that was perfect for NVIS. And I was getting a great NVIS signal out of that antenna since it was so low to the ground. So if you post a question online or you're just reading through those forums like I'm known to do, and you see somebody say that it just won't work, well, don't necessarily take that at face value. Sometimes you've got to go out and do a little experimenting so you will really know what works and what doesn't. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.